Hi everyone. I want to talk to you today a little bit about piano technique. Something that a lot of students resist practicing and want to get right to the music and can't see the point of playing all of those scales and exercises. So first of all, remember technique are the tools you need to perform music really well. And none of us have enough of it. I've had the great privilege of studying with some of the greatest pianists on this planet. Um, and many of them practice technique daily or some form of warm up. So I want to just break this down and make this video short today just to get the ball rolling here. So we are athletes at the piano. I was never trained that way with my piano teachers when I was younger, but you can injure yourself playing the piano and many great pianists injure themselves on a regular basis. Something that people probably have never heard before. How? By over practicing, overdoing, being tired, um, playing on a piano that's a bit of a brute and forcing. So many, many different ways to uh, injure yourself. Uh, you can injure yourself, of course, without playing the piano that can prevent you from playing the piano. So if we took technique and broke it down into a bunch of components, the first thing I would advise everyone to give a try to are hand exercises and body exercises. Again, not something that I grew up a lot with, but something that great pianists do regularly. So for example, when we play the piano, we open our hands and we close them. So all of the tendons and muscles that make that happen can get very tight over time and we need to stretch them out. So there are all kinds of exercises I can show you for that. Certainly many of you have done the conservatory route of training, whereby you do the necessary technical requirements of scales, triads, chords, arpeggios, and so on uh, for each grade. Keep in mind that the requirements for playing scales, chords, and arpeggios are oftentimes much slower than the pieces that you're playing at the same grade. So not a great benchmark to get the tools you need to perform well. Besides conservatory technique, there are a plethora of technical exercises that you can play. Some of you may have heard of Hannon. So there are 60 exercises by Charles-Louis Anon, a French pianist of the 19th century. And this was a requirement um, at the Moscow and St. Petersburg Conservatory. You had to be able to play all 60 at the drop of a hat on your exam in any key. Um, and people like Rachmaninoff grew up with that tradition playing Hannon. The great pianist Moritz Moskowski did the school of double notes. Double notes being a very advanced piano technique that help you a lot with independence in the hand. The great pianist Alfred Cortot wrote something called the rational principles of piano technique. All kinds of wonderful things in here, including a transferable table of uh, uh, tonalities to practice your exercises in. He was also the principal of the Paris Conservatory and did some of the earliest recordings of Frédéric Chopin. Franz Liszt, the great rock star of the 19th century, also did technical exercises. Isidore Philippe, another great French pedagogue, uh, who I believe taught Alicia de la Rocha, and uh, he wrote a lot of different uh, exercises 
for holding on to notes while you play other notes. And we also have people like Ernst von Dochnanyi, who wrote these, uh, again, very advanced uh, technical exercises. He actually starts out with a little bit more five finger exercises. So there's many, many places you can go to experiment with exercises that help train you in hand position and independence of the fingers. And then we have those wonderful etudes. So a lot of etudes were constructed simply for pedagogical use. So Czerny, who was a student of Beethoven, uh, wrote thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of them. So this is his Opus 299. Look at all the exercises in there. And after those kinds of exercises, there's the artist etudes. So people like Franz Liszt wrote his transcendental etudes, uh, Frederick Chopin, Debussy. So all kinds of pieces that are really artistically wonderful to perform for people um, that also have tremendous technical demands. As well, many of the great pianists that I worked with um, warmed up with a particular piece, and that was the fourth movement of the second sonata of Frédéric Chopin. So after the uh, famous funeral march ends, there's this, I mean, Alfred Cortot called it the wind over the grave, my French teacher, Cécile Lucette, said it was like people murmuring after the funeral, but it starts out like this. It's really, really fast. And um, people practice it like this. With lots of high finger action, because it's a brutal, um, very difficult piano piece and a great five finger exercise piece as well. So those are all the different categories uh, of uh, technical things that you can do to prepare to have a wonderful piano technique. And today I just wanna focus on a couple from the first category, which are the hand exercises, uh, maybe more than a couple. So I showed you the open, close hand. This is something that you can do especially if you're waiting backstage and there's no warm-up piano and it's cold. So we open and close our hand to play the piano. We just stop part way. So physio stretches. Disclaimer on all of these exercises. Please consult with a um, somebody in the medical community uh, if you have any kind of concerns about doing them. So this one stretches out the lower the under the arm tendons and you have to lock at the elbow to do it properly and you, of course you can do variations on it uh, by twisting your hand around hopefully you can see this and then of course you can make a fist and draw the hand down and that will stretch out all of the muscles and tendons on this side so lateral extensions are really good for velocity at the keyboard so things like this where you open and close the hand. One of the favorites that some of my students really like doing is the lion and the bunk bed. So you have this post holding up the bunk bed and here is the bunk bed and the four sleepy lions, two and four go on top and three and five below. They snuggle in for a good night's sleep and then they switch around. And then they have a very restless night going back and forth. So this kind of helps to loosen up the area around the knuckle. The thumb massaging the tops and bottoms of the fingers all the way down to finger five is a really good way to work out this muscle here, the thumb muscle that helps you to cross over. And of course, arpeggios and scales, lots of things require the crossing of the thumb. Let's see, another one that you can do is just simply take the finger and massage the thumb into open position. 
starting with five, four, three, and two. Another one I really like is making this position and dropping your finger two down, your three up, and your four down, and your five up, and then just kind of pushing in a bit and down with the fingers that are down. You can feel a stretch in there. And then of course you can reverse it around. So two up, three down, four up, and five down. There's just so many of these exercises and we didn't even talk about like upper body exercises uh, as we do play the piano with our whole body. Um, and of course, many pianists as they get older uh, can develop back problems. So things that strengthen um, the back muscles are so important to keep you upright. So I would highly uh, encourage you to explore uh, these types of exercises. Again, consult with someone in the medical community or a physiotherapist, something like that, uh, that, that could help you um, to do these properly. But uh, there is a, um, a wonderful book by a Hungarian named Gat, G-A-T, called The Technique of the Piano. Uh, and um, or the technique of piano playing, I think. Uh, and uh, at the back of it, there's a, a really wonderful compendium of these exercises. So more about technique soon, but just remember, without it, your piano playing is never going to be that great. And sometimes we have to do things that we don't like to do or that aren't very pleasant to do to achieve greatness. You have to wait for an outcome, something that's a bit tricky for some of us these days. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for listening.